Your ClickBank success depends on the niche you choose. If you want to succeed with affiliate marketing, you must first build your business, and it is a business, it is not a hobby. You have to build it on the right niche. A niche, of course, relates to the category of topics or problems that the products you are promoting solve. That's what a niche is. Unfortunately, failed marketers choose niches the wrong way. First, they go for niches based on a hunch. They have a gut feel that a niche is hot or awesome. This is a serious problem because even if you think something is great, it doesn't necessarily mean that your target audience members will share your impression. There might be a big disconnect between what you think about a product and your intended audiences. Failed marketers also choose niches based on popularity. When you go on ClickBank, you can search for existing products based on keyword relevance as well as gravity. Gravity measures how fast a particular product is selling. Too many ClickBank affiliates select solely based on gravity. This is a serious statistical mistake. It really is. Why? Let's say you have 10 affiliates all promoting the same product. Nine of them suck, but the 10th affiliate marketer is selling this product all day, every day. Due to the huge amount of sales generated by that one affiliate, the gravity score for that product is going to look distorted. If you're just going to go with how fast that product is selling, you may be given the impression that you're looking at a slam dunk. Unfortunately, you find out in the worst way possible when you start selling that product that you're actually like the nine other affiliates who suck at selling that product. Do you see how this works? You just can't go based on popularity. You have to look at the big picture. You have to consider other factors. Finally, failed ClickBank marketers struggle because they simply copied somebody else's model. Don't get me wrong. If you know what you're doing, copying somebody else's success can lead to your own success. I have no problems with copying. What I do have problems with is when you copy blindly. Unfortunately, this is precisely what these struggling or failed ClickBank marketers do. How winning ClickBank marketers choose niches. Now that you have a clear understanding of how failed marketers choose ClickBank niches, let me tell you how successful ClickBank marketers play the game. First, they find traffic. This is very important. You must determine whether a niche has demand or not. This is the first question you need to ask yourself. Is there an existing demand for this type of product? Put it another way. Do the problems that these products solve get enough interest on the internet? Are people willing to buy solutions to these problems? Next, successful ClickBank marketers figure out how other existing marketers market that product. They don't start from scratch. They don't trust their gut instincts. They don't follow their hunches. Instead, they look at what already works. They look for objective proof that the promotion model set by a competitor succeeds at some level or another. Third, successful ClickBank marketers create a value-driven marketing platform to promote ClickBank products. They don't just post content. They don't just blast out links. They create an integrated system that markets many different ClickBank products over time. Usually, they use a mailing list to do this. They attract people based on content, get people to sign up to their mailing list, and then they send useful information alternating with promotional offers. Eventually, the list pays for itself, and much more. Finally, successful ClickBank affiliates use a three-layer conversion system. This is a highly effective content marketing system that markets the people in a way that doesn't offend them or turn them off. I'll describe this in more detail in the next video. What's important is that you understand that you're going to have to use high-quality content to deliver value to the lives of people you are trying to market to. How do three-layer conversion systems work for ClickBank marketing? Let's get one thing clear. People looking to buy the ClickBank products you are promoting don't care about you, okay? Let's get that idea out of your head. They don't care about your brand. They don't care about your intentions or motivations. All they care about are their problems. They have problems that they are trying to solve. These are problems that the products you promote must solve. Always keep that in mind. Don't think that just because you're promoting content and you are spreading awareness regarding certain niche products to certain audiences that they are somehow obligated to you. They're not. Get that idea out of your head. Instead, these people are always asking, what's in it for me? If you operate from this level, then you would give them solutions that solve their problems. Most importantly, you would position whatever ClickBank product you are selling in these terms. This enables you to connect with them more efficiently and sell more products. That's how the game works. You have to understand that they are not trying to do you any favors. They're definitely not looking to hand you cash. That's not their top priority. Their top priority is to solve their problems. Give them that solution. And this is exactly how the three-layer content conversion system works.
Layer number one, produce content that discusses your target audience's problem. The product that you are selling solves a problem that your target audience members have. Create content that discusses their problem. When people see such content, they not only see that you are talking about their problems, but you are also offering solutions. When they see this, you establish authority and credibility. You are talking their language. You are speaking to issues that are important to them. Just as importantly, you are offering them many different options. And by doing so, you establish your expertise. You're not just some random person telling them to buy one product and one product alone. At this level, you're communicating to your target audience members that you understand their problem and that you have a clear, big-picture view of what they're dealing with. So you explain many different issues regarding their problem. You lay it out. And the more information they get from your content, the more credible and authoritative you become in their eyes. Layer number two, produce content that lays out their options. Now that you have established to your prospects that you understand their problems and you've laid out the wide range of causes, possibilities, and complications regarding their problems, the next step is to zero in on options. These are possible solutions they can select, but you mention this in categorical terms. For example, if somebody is trying to get a job, you can first spell out that the reason that they're struggling to get a job is because their resume does not clearly communicate their skills. You can also lay out other possibilities, such as they may be applying to the wrong jobs. There might be a mismatch between the availability of jobs in their city and their qualifications. In the second layer of content that you produce, you're going to lay out their options in categorical terms. You basically say, if you are struggling with resume issues, these are your options. If you're struggling with a skills mismatch, here are your options. If you're looking for a job in the wrong place, here are your options. Put yourself in the shoes of the person reading this. If you are trying to get a job, they would love your content. You have demonstrated to them that you have a good understanding of their problem and you demonstrate that this problem is not unsolvable. You have shown by laying out different options that this problem is not impossible. At this stage, your prospect is beginning to trust you more and more. In this level, you are obviously going to start working on getting them to like the option that you are promoting. Now, please understand that at this level, you're not promoting a direct link to ClickBank. If you do that, it's going to blow up in your face. This is going to look like spam. People are going to feel that you manipulated them. Instead, you are going to play up a category of options that contain the product that you will ultimately promote to your prospect. Going back to our job seeker scenario, of all the different solutions available to them, you can highlight resume services. You can spell out the advantages and disadvantages as well as show case studies why this is the easier and more realistic option compared to others. Of course, you're not going to completely drop the ball when it comes to other options, but you're not going to work as hard to make them look appealing. Do you see how this works? At this level, you are practicing your salesmanship, but you're going to have to do it in a subtle way. You cannot be obvious. While you're not blatantly promoting a specific product, you are directing the mind and the attention of your prospect to a specific set of options. Layer number three, produce content that sells the specific product you are pushing through comparisons. This is the most important part of the three-layer content conversion system. Drop the ball here and you're not going to make a sale. Seriously. It doesn't matter how awesome layers one and two are. If you screw this part up, you're not going to make money. Why? This is where the rubber meets the road. Seriously. This is where you drop your ClickBank product affiliate link. At this stage, you are directly selling a ClickBank product. Now, what makes this very effective is that you're not blatant about it. In layer two, you got the prospect to sign on to a particular type of solution. They're not going to click through to layer three if they do not agree with you that a certain category of options is the best for them. They would stay on layer two and move on. Do you understand me? The fact that they click through means you have convinced them at some level or another that this category of options makes the best sense in their situation. So they click through, and then what do they see? You cannot just drop them on a review of one product. If you do that, you are dropping the ball. You really are. It becomes abundantly obvious that you went through all this time and bother trying to convince them to buy one product and one product alone. The better approach is to sell through comparisons. You have to understand that people make decisions based on comparisons. They don't just look at one product and think to themselves, that product is right for me. People don't think that way. Instead, they look at different options, and then they make their decision. Because when they look at an option, they ask themselves, this option is better compared to what? 
That's how they determine value. If you put a $1,000 computer in front of somebody's face and you tell them that this is a great value, they probably would not be able to make a decision. Now, if you put five computers in front of them at different price points with different features, they would feel that they're in a position to make a better decision. They are able to compare the different features. They're not just focused on the price. They're not just focused on one specific feature. They feel that they can see the overall picture regarding the total range of value each product brings to the table. That's how the human mind works. Decisions are comparative by nature. We're always asking ourselves, compared to what? So give them that comparison. This is how you sell. So when people click through to layer three, there should be at least three products there from ClickBank. You break them down based on features, and then you make notations regarding how likely this specific option is going to help them solve their problem. Then you do the same for the other products. At that point, your recommended product may stand apart from the rest. Honestly, it doesn't matter because all of the products that you put in front of them are affiliate products. If they pick your suggestion, great. If they don't pick your suggestion and go with another product that you featured, you still make money. Do you see how this works? Sell through comparison. Don't just feature one product because when you do that, you only have one bite at the apple. You also run the risk of looking like you have an agenda. Now, let's get real here. You always have an agenda. You're not putting up this website because you have nothing else better to do. However, you have to do this in a way that overcomes their suspicion and skepticism. Appear to give more value by showing a product comparison page. Why use this three-layer approach? Make no mistake, if you are just going to promote a naked ClickBank product affiliate link by buying traffic, it's going to be expensive. If you're going to promote using free traffic methods, it's going to take too much time. The reason for both outcomes is the same. You haven't qualified the traffic. Take the case of Facebook ads. I've seen people promote ClickBank products directly on Facebook ads. You can tell from the low engagement and other indicators that they're not doing well. This should come as no surprise. You haven't fully qualified your traffic. That's why I suggest that you do not use direct link promotions, especially with paid traffic. If you use organic traffic, which is free, you end up wasting time. Sure, you're not blowing cash, but you're actually wasting something far more precious, your time. Use the three-layer approach instead. Another reason why the three-layer approach works is because it fits with how people make decisions. Let me ask you, when was the last time you bought something from a complete and total stranger? I would venture to guess that it has been a long time, if at all. You're not unique in this. Most people do not buy from total strangers. We buy from people we trust. How is trust created? Well, first of all, we must like the options the salesperson presents us with. For us to like these options, we must feel that we know enough about what's out there. This is precisely how the three-layer content marketing approach I've described works. You start with content that gives the reader knowledge. Now, they're not looking to become experts in the product category you are promoting. Instead, they just want to know if you understand where they're coming from. They just want to know if you are credible and authoritative enough to have a grasp of the problem they are struggling with. This content establishes your authority. If they click through to layer two, you are then in a position to get them to like one category of options compared to the many other categories out there. By the time they click on to layer three, and they see the comparison, you pretty much have established a decent level of trust. Do you see how this works? Finally, the three-layer approach gives you a more versatile promotion strategy. There are many different places on the internet that you can get free traffic from. Since you have essentially three different kinds of content, you can mix and match traffic platforms with the content you have so you can drive more traffic from those platforms. For example, if you're going to be promoting primarily on forums and message boards, it's probably a good idea to promote using level one content. You look for existing discussions regarding the issues that you deal with your level one content. You then answer whatever questions people posted, and then you quote certain blocks of text from your content page, and then you link to your page as a source. Similarly, people might be talking about the category of solutions you talk about with your level two or layer two content. If you find such discussions on message boards, Facebook groups, or Facebook pages, you can copy and paste bits and pieces from your content, comment on it, and then drop a link. Finally, if you have a Twitter account and you are targeting certain hashtags, you can rotate in your level three content because you can assume that a significant number of people following you already know what options are out there and they're looking for a specific comparison of products regarding the category of solutions they are already sold on. Do you see how this works? Using a three-layer content marketing approach enables you to work with existing demand and traffic. 
You're not reinventing your content each and every time you come across a potential traffic source. ClickBank Marketing Overview. I selected these marketing techniques since you can do them manually or you can hire virtual assistants to help you. They are free and they can be scaled up. Those are the selection criteria I use to filter these options out of the hundreds of free traffic generation options currently available on the internet. In my experience, these options work best with ClickBank products when they are sold through the three-layer content conversion system I described in video two. This video gives you an overview of each marketing method, and I will describe these marketing secrets in full detail in the videos dedicated to them. In this overview, I just want to give you a good understanding of what these marketing methods are, how they work, as well as their advantages and disadvantages. Quora Answer Marketing. Quora.com is one of the internet's largest websites. It is a question and answer website that gets a ton of traffic. People from all over the world ask and answer questions. It is a thriving community and a lot of answers actually get a lot of views. How Quora Marketing Works You find a question that's related to your niche. How do you do this? You can use targeted niche keywords or you can simply click through Quora and look at their related questions. Regardless of how you find a question, the question must be directly or closely related enough to the problem solved by the product you are promoting. Once you find a collection of these types of questions, you can then post a unique answer to each of them. Your answer must relate directly to the question. You're not dodging the question. You're not just dropping a link. You're not spamming. Instead, you have to answer the question directly. Otherwise, you will get banned. Once you've done that, you then find a way to massage in a mention of your level one or level two content. It all depends on the question. That's all you need to do for Quora marketing. It's all about finding the right question and then crafting an answer that not only answers the question directly, but also uses your marketing content as a resource. If people like your response, they click on the source link and they end up on your website. If they click through one or a couple more pages, they end up on your product comparison page. If they like what they see, they can then click to buy the product. Advantages. The main advantage of Quora is that it attracts a tremendous amount of traffic. You'd be surprised as to how many views your answers could get. Also, the more you answer, the more aggregate views you can rack up. Sure, each answer might not get that many views, but if you post a ton of answers on Quora, those views do add up. Most importantly, once you post an answer on Quora and it doesn't get taken down, you can potentially get traffic from the answers you have written a long time ago for a long, long time. Another key advantage of Quora is that it covers a lot of niches. Unlike niche-specific forums that have a fairly narrow niche coverage or Facebook groups and pages that are restricted to a certain range of niches, Quora doesn't really have any limits as far as topics are concerned. As long as people ask a question regarding your niche, you can post an answer. The best part to all of this is that even if nobody asks questions regarding your niche, this shouldn't stop you. Why? You can hire a virtual assistant from places like congoplus.com to post niche-related questions for you. You then look them up and answer in a non-spammy way with your three-layer content system. Disadvantages While it's true that your answers can drive quite a bit of traffic, they have to be visible. In other words, they have to be near the top of the set of answers Quora displays when people look up the questions you answered. How does Quora determine the order of answers it shows per question? Quora usually considers the number of upvotes your answer got in determining whether it's going to display your answer higher up on the page. Another disadvantage to Quora is the fact that the traffic that you actually get from this platform depends largely on the quality of your answers. This is not a simple case of just dropping a link at the right place and then sitting back and watching all that traffic come in. It doesn't work that way. You actually have to answer people's questions and you have to give them enough of a reason to click on your three-layer content link as a resource. There's a little bit of salesmanship involved here. Your answer has to draw them into your link. Your answer has to create some sort of urgency of the mind of the reader to make them want to click on your resource link to end up on your website. Finally, please understand that you cannot post a link to any part of your three-layer content conversion system every time you answer. If you do that, I'm sorry to say it, but you are spamming. You really are. The truth is, only a certain percentage of your answers can be promotional in nature. If you promote too much, you might get banned. Post comments on blog posts that use the Facebook comment plugin. Generally speaking, WordPress blogs have their own built-in WordPress commenting system. However, some bloggers prefer the Facebook comment plugin. How come? When you use this plugin, people can only comment on your post if they are logged into Facebook and they comment as themselves or their page. This adds a social element to your blog's comment section. Also, when people comment using their Facebook accounts, 
they have the option of showing their comment along with a link to your post on their Facebook wall. This has the potential of bringing more traffic to your website. This is why a significant percentage of bloggers use Facebook's comment plugin system instead of the default comment system WordPress comes with. How does this system work? First, you need to search search engines using your target keywords along with a search string like Facebook Comments plugin. This search string produces a list of blog posts that use Facebook's comment plugin and are targeted towards your niche. You then filter the results to determine whether these posts actually talk about your niche. Once you're sure, you can then post a comment and answer whatever questions people raise and then quote certain parts from your level one content and use a shortened link to link to your level one content as a source or resource. Advantages. The most obvious advantage of this traffic generation technique to promote ClickBank products is that you get highly targeted traffic. Let's put it this way. Somebody's not going to bother to read the comments of a blog post unless they are truly interested in your niche or a problem related to your niche. Second, they're not going to click on your resource or source link if they are not, at some level or another, curious about the solution you're talking about or are impressed with your answer. Finally, when you promote this way, you get a sticky or permanent source of traffic. It may not be much, but it's highly targeted and it's not going to go away anytime soon. As long as the blog that you commented on stays in business, people can see your link when they look at certain niche targeted posts. Disadvantages The most obvious disadvantage to this form of ClickBank marketing is that you can't expect much traffic. Admittedly, this is low volume traffic. The good news is that this is highly targeted traffic. As I have explained above, people who click through are not curiosity seekers. These are people who actually have problems and are looking for solutions. These are solutions that fall within your niche. Also, a key downside to this approach is that you're not just dropping links and getting traffic. People are not going to click because they have nothing else better to do. Usually, they would only click if they like the quality of your answers. This is a serious problem. Why? You can't copy and paste the same stock answer. Each answer must be high quality and must address the needs of people reading the blog post. Forum marketing. Forum marketing involves finding online message boards that talk about topics related to your niche. You engage with other forum members. Maybe you're asking questions. Perhaps you're answering questions. Whatever the case may be, you interact with people who are interested in your niche. You have to go find forums that are either directly related to your niche or have a subforum that is directly related. Similarly, you can market on forums that are directly or indirectly related to your niche. How Forum Marketing Works Basically, you create an account that looks like a real forum member's account. You discuss issues related to your niche for quite some time. You don't drop a link. After a while, you should become credible because you have demonstrated that you know what you're talking about. At this point, you can share third-party content. This is high-quality content published by your competitors or non-competitors that are authoritative in your niche. When you do this, you become an even bigger expert. People start to look at you as an authority. Once you have established a high enough level of credibility, then you start responding to existing discussions with a link as well as content commentary regarding your layer one or level one content. Eventually, you should be able to have enough cloud on the forums you're marketing to start discussions that directly talk about your own resources. Advantages. The big advantage of forum marketing is that you get really highly targeted traffic. These are people who are already talking about the problems that the affiliate products you're promoting solve. You are interacting with people who are directly interested in the solutions that you are promoting. Disadvantages Generally speaking, forum traffic tends to produce low-volume traffic. At best, you can get a moderate level of traffic from these platforms. The good news is that by this is offset the fact that you're getting higher quality traffic. These are people who are actually interested in your niche. If you set up your posts correctly, even if you get a fairly low number of people clicking on your link, they are more likely to convert. That's right, they are more likely to buy whatever ClickBank affiliate product you are promoting. Another drawback to forum marketing is the fact that people will only click through if they think your answers are credible enough. It can take some time to build a good level of credibility and authority on forums. In fact, a lot of forum marketers never get to that point. Finally, many forum members are very sensitive to spam. Even if you share the very best third party content, these people might be skeptical of you. In fact, they might get so suspicious that they petition or pressure the forum administrator to ban you. It all depends on the specific community you are marketing to.
This is why it's a good idea to work on building your credibility and authority. Once you've gotten that out of the way, then you have a lot more leeway in sharing links. Automated Twitter Marketing Automated Twitter marketing boils down to scheduling a lot of posts on Twitter using content posting software. At the same time, you're going to be tracking competitors' account and following people who follow them. The key here is to follow people who are truly interested in your niche. When you are sharing content, you're going to be using targeted hashtags. These are hashtags that are directly related to your niche. How it works. Your first step is to find the very best content currently available on social platforms related to your niche. You then feed this into software that publishes automatically round the clock on your Twitter feed. You set the times when the post will appear. You must also make sure that the content that you're automatically publishing are linked to hashtags that are directly related to your niche. The key here is to rotate the third-party content with your level 1, level 2, and level 3 content. This way, when followers that you have managed to attract throughout your time on Twitter like your level 1 content, they can click through and convert on website. Also, people who are exposed to your content, thanks to your hashtag targeting, can like your third-party content so much that they follow you. Of course, you're not just going to let the system run on autopilot. You're also going to manually follow accounts that follow your competitors. Advantages Depending on how you set things up, this can be a mostly automated and passive form of marketing. Another advantage to this technique is that you get to target your niche precisely using hashtags that you reverse-engineered from your competitors. Disadvantages The big disadvantage to this method is that traffic can vary quite a bit. Sometimes you get a lot of traffic, sometimes you don't. It all depends on the traffic flow on Twitter. Also, the amount of followers you attract depend on the quality of your curated content. If you're sloppy with this type of content, you're not going to get too many followers. Another disadvantage is that you are going to be following your competitors' followers. In other words, you're not going to be targeting people who are complete virgins to your niche. This is a good thing because these people are already interested in your niche. The downside is they are already aware of your competitors, so they're going to hold you up to a certain standard. You must meet that standard, otherwise you're not going to convert. Automated Facebook Marketing This technique enables you to build the following through curated third-party content that you post automatically on your Facebook page. You simply set up software to keep publishing this third-party, high-quality, niche-specific content on your page. This establishes you as some sort of authority in your niche. Once you have posted a tremendous amount on your page and it looks fully developed, you then republish some of your page posts on Facebook groups that are related to your niche. If you do this enough times and you don't get banned, you build an organic following. When people see your page's content on their groups and they like what they see, they might like your page and start getting your updates. How this method works. You start out with curated, niche-related material. These are top performers in terms of engagement. This is very important. Not only should the content produced by competitors or whoever else be directly related to your niche, they must also have high levels of engagement. In other words, this is tried and proven content. This is content that is already viral in your niche on Facebook. You then take this content and mix it in with your level 1, level 2, and level 3 content. These materials are published in sequence using software on your Facebook page. You syndicate the content that you publish on your page to niche-related groups to get more people to like your page. This is how you build the organic following of your page. An alternative to this is to build a group and add active posters that you find in niche groups and the niche pages you monitor. Advantages Just like the automated Twitter method I described above, this can be almost completely automated and it's a fairly passive way of generating traffic. Disadvantages Traffic can be very erratic. On some days, you can get quite a bit of traffic because you shared really high-quality content. On other days, people might not be all that responsive. Also, you have to syndicate your Facebook page links to other groups. This can be a problem. Some groups are very welcoming of page posts. Others are very suspicious. Don't be surprised if you get banned from some groups. However, you should start to worry if almost all the groups that you joined almost automatically ban you the moment you join. You know you're doing something wrong there. Just like with forum marketing, the way to get around this is to engage first and establish some sort of credibility before you can start sharing your own page's links. Shortcut. Pumping traffic using the methods above can take up a lot of your time. You have to know what you're doing. The good news is, there's a shortcut. You can hire a virtual assistant from places like congoplus.com, which features freelance virtual assistants who would work for the very affordable rate of $30 per 8-hour day. The best part is they will work on a quota. 
So you agree to a quota for a full day's worth of production, and if they meet that quota, you pay them the $30. You can also try getting virtual assistance from Fiverr.com or Freelancer.com. I use virtual assistants not only to find my keywords, but also to help me find content, which I can then instruct them to feed into my software so I can automatically publish on Twitter and Facebook. If you pay your virtual assistant a premium, you can also get them to market on Quora for you. Of course, you have to train them and guide them so they can produce the quality that you're looking for. How to select a niche product to promote the smart way. A lot of ClickBank marketers fail because they don't know how to pick the right niche. They end up putting in a lot of time, effort, and energy only to lose interest, market to non-existing demand, and otherwise commit a range of rookie mistakes. If you don't want that to happen to you, follow the steps below to the letter. Step one, list out your personal interests. Right off the top of your head, write down your personal interests. These should be topics that you love talking about and are so interested in that you would talk about them even if you're not getting paid. Come up with a long list. As long as you're truly interested in these topics, write them down. Step number two, filter by demand, search volume. Go to Google AdWords and create an account if you don't already have one. Once you're logged in, click Tools and use Google's Keyword Planner tool. Enter in keywords that are related to the personal interests that you have listed in step one. You should be able to find lots of related keywords to these interests and download these because they will have search volumes next to the keywords. At this point, you're going to delete from your list niches or personal interests that have too little search volume or are too much. You want something in the middle. Step number three, filter by competition. Now that you have a shorter list of niches to filter, the next step is to enter their keywords into Google's main search box. When you enter a search phrase into Google, you will get results, but at the top left corner, Google will inform you how many pages target that search phrase. Take note of this number and write them down next to each niche keyword. Once you have entered all your relevant niche keywords into Google, eliminate from your list niches that are too competitive. These are niches that have too many pages targeting them. I'll leave this up to you. It all boils down to your comfort level. Some people are comfortable with a tremendous amount of competition. Other people would like something more manageable. I'll leave this up to you so you call the threshold level. Maybe you can deal with 1 million pages. Perhaps you are more ready at ease with 300,000 or less pages. Whatever the case may be, apply it uniformly across all the niches you have left on your list. Step number four, enter your keywords into ClickBank Marketplace and pick by relevance. Now that you have a fairly short list of niches, pick the top three niches that you're most interested in. Enter their keywords in the ClickBank's Marketplace and select products based on relevance. Usually, you should be able to find a product, but sometimes your niche may not show up. There might not be a product that's directly related to your niche. There might be something that's closely or somewhat related. Whatever the case may be, pick out as many products from the ClickBank Marketplace that are related to your niche. Step number five, promote all products at first. In the beginning, you should promote all the products you are able to retrieve using the niche selection process above. Your strategy is pretty straightforward at this point. Promote all the products at your site first and pick the top three winners. These are the products that convert the most. Focus on conversions. Don't focus on how much traffic they get. Traffic is worthless unless it converts. Always remember that. Pick the top three winners in terms of conversions and stick to those. Note, gravity is not really all that helpful because of different circumstances. I've already mentioned earlier on in this training why you shouldn't just select products based on gravity. Instead, get as many products that are directly related to your niche as possible and promote all those products. You're going to then filter them based on how successful they are. How to get your niche target keywords. At this point, you should already have selected products that you are going to be promoting on your site. Your next step is to find websites that promote these products. Look at their meta descriptions. Look at their headings and subheadings and reverse engineer their keyword targets. These pages target certain keywords. So, get all those keywords. Next. Use Google's Keyword Planner tool again to find even more keywords related to these products. At the end of this process, you should have a long list of pages full of keywords that are related to the products that you are promoting. What are you going to do with your keywords? You're going to use these keywords to find places on the internet to promote your three-layer content marketing system. You're also going to use these keywords to help guide you through the content creation process. You're going to incorporate some of these keywords into the content that you produce. Also, you're going to be using these keywords to find Quora questions that you're going to answer. You're also going to use these keywords to turn them into questions that you will publish on Twitter. Quora Answer Marketing What follows is a step-by-step -step guide to marketing on Quora. I've already described what Quora is and how it works in the overview section. 
If you need a refresher, check video 3 once again to get a clear understanding of what Quora is, how it works, as well as its advantages and disadvantages. In this video, I'm going to step you through the process of how to promote on Quora. Step number 1. Use your niche keywords to get questions regarding your niche. At this point, you should have a long list of keywords. These are keywords that are directly related to the products that you have selected. Enter these keywords into Quora's search box. You should be able to retrieve at least some questions related to your niche. Step number two, filter questions based on how they fit your level one materials. At this point, you should also have your three layer content system set up. The first layer is a blog post that informs the reader regarding the problems that they have and the range of solutions, as well as a common sense guide on what to do and what not to do. The layer two material that you produce must talk about a particular category of solutions and why they're better than other solutions out there. The layer three that you produce uses a comparison of the different products that you have found through ClickBank. I hope that much is clear, so if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and do that. The key here is that your content must answer key questions that your audience members would have in mind when looking for solutions. Also, your content must answer those questions. In step two of Quora Answer Marketing, you have to filter all the questions that you have found on Quora in terms of how well they fit your level one material. If there are not enough questions that directly fit, you might want to hire a virtual assistant to create questions for you. Of course, they're going to have to use many accounts. They need to switch among different accounts to make it look legit. Regardless, you need to populate Quora with questions that are directly related to your niche and which are directly answered by your layer one or layer two materials. Step number three, answer 10 to 15 questions before answering your first niche related question. If you're going to be using your main account on Quora to answer questions, you have to be very careful. You can't just answer all questions that are directly related to your niche and forget about everything else. If anybody wanted to ban you, they just need to look at your answers and they would see a clear pattern. It's obvious that you were just answering only a certain type of question and dropping your link all over the place. That's a dead giveaway. Don't do that. Instead, answer 10 to 15 questions across a wide range of topics before answering a question that is directly related to your niche. Step number four, answer your niche-related questions this way. Throughout my years of marketing on Quora, I've noticed certain patterns that grabbed more eyeballs and produced more results. Your answers should fit the following pattern. First, you need to answer the question directly. Read the question several times. What are they asking? What are they not asking? Are there any limits to the answers that they're looking for? Next, quote materials from your resource. If you're going to be dropping a link to your layer one content, quote a block of text from that content and explain why it is relevant. In other words, you have a specific answer to the question and then you quote from your source, which is your layer one content, and then there has to be a paragraph explaining why that content is relevant or makes sense in this context. After you've done that, you include a link to your layer one or layer two content and claim that this is your source. If you do this right, you're not going to get banned. Also, if you do this right, people who read your answer are more likely to click through. Step number five, answer 10 to 15 questions before answering your next niche-related question. This is a big deal. You can't just answer only questions related to your niche. You're going to be too obvious when you do that. I suggest that you answer 10 to 15 other unrelated questions in a wide range of unrelated niches. When you answer these questions, drop links randomly. This is curated content that answers their questions and are extremely helpful. These links are not related to your niche. When you do this, you build authority. You begin to look like a legitimate and bona fide member of the Quora community. Step number six, drop your target link 15% of the time and do not copy and paste. It's really important to establish a healthy ratio of linked posts on Quora. As I keep repeating, when administrators check your account, they must not see a clear pattern. You must throw them off. Your account must look legit. Your account must look like the account of somebody who truly likes helping people by answering their questions. How do you do this? Only 15% of your total posts link to your own pages. The rest link to other third-party content or do not have links at all. Also, none of your posts are simple copies and pastes of each other. You're not just using some template over and over again. If you are able to do this and you are able to maintain a 15% ratio, you probably will not get banned for spamming. I can't guarantee anything, but the chances of you getting banned are going to be lower than people who just drop a link every time they post. Comment on blog posts that use Facebook comments. Here's the step-by-step -step directions you need to follow for this marketing technique. Step number one, 
Use your targeted keywords in Google to find blog posts that use the Facebook Comments plugin. Use this search parameter, your keyword or key phrase here, plus Facebook Comment plugin. Of course, modify that search string with your specific keyword. You use one keyword at a time. I know you have a lot of keywords on your list. Do unique searches for each one of your keywords using that string, and you should be able to retrieve a lot of results on Google. Step number two, go through each result and filter them based on relevance to your layer one content. Click through each and every result. Read each post. Does it make sense to comment on this post and refer to your layer one content? Is there a strong enough connection? If the answer is yes, then copy and paste that result to a separate file and keep filtering your results. At the end of this process, you should have a long list of blog posts that use the Facebook comment plugin that are related enough to your niche. Given this topical similarity, it's easier to post your link on your responses to these posts. Step number three, answer issues raised by the blog post. It's very important to signal to whoever wrote the blog post you're commenting on that you actually read their post. This means you're going to avoid posting, hey, good job, or I love this post, or other similar garbage. Instead, you're going to repeat some of what they said and explain your understanding of it. Then, you're also going to raise issues with them or raise questions. You may not agree and say so. After you do that, raise key points that are related to your Layer 1 content and then quote a segment of your content and then post a link. Done properly, your comment is not going to look like spam. Instead, your comment actually enhances the content that you're commenting on. Step number four, make sure you only post when there's a direct fit. I can't repeat this enough. You must only post comments on a blog post that directly fit your niche. There also has to be a natural progression from your level one content to whatever content you're commenting on. Step number five, pace yourself. Look at each post as an investment. It's going to take you some time to craft a winning comment. You can't rush through this. You can't post garbage. You definitely cannot copy and paste the same answer over and over again. This is why you need to pace yourself. Each comment should be at least 200 to 300 words if you're doing this right. Obviously, you can't do this all day, so set up a schedule where you're commenting maybe 10, 20 times per day. The good news is this is an investment. If you're only posting high-quality materials, chances are most of your comments will not be taken down. Also, chances are people are actually going to click through. Shortcuts. Hire a virtual assistant from congoplus.com for only $30 per day. Not only can you set quotas with them, but they only list people who have a college degree and who have a strong command of the English language. Similarly, you can hire virtual assistants from places like fiverr.com. Whatever you do, make sure you screen English proficiency if you're going to ask them to help you with this form of ClickBank marketing, forum marketing. What follows are step-by-step -step directions for successful forum marketing of ClickBank products. Please note that you should have your three-layer content marketing system already set up. This is a series of articles posted on your blog that link to each other. You have to have these already. These are not only targeted to your keywords, but they also compare different ClickBank products in your niche. Look at the three-layer content marketing portion of this training to get the inside scoop on how to set this up. Step-by-step -step directions for ClickBank forum marketing. Step number one, use Google to get a massive list of forums in your niche. Now that you have a massive list of keywords related to the products that you're going to be promoting, as well as your niche, enter these keywords one by one into Google to look for forums. You're not looking for blog posts. You're not looking for Quora questions. You're not looking for places to post Facebook comments on. Instead, you're looking for actual forum discussions or better yet, forums that are directly targeting your niche. If you can't find forums that are directly related to your niche, look for sub forums that are directly related. If you can't find that, look for off topic or general chat sections of these forums where people talk about your niches. Step number two. Create a real-looking account complete with your picture, biography, and other details. Please note that you don't have to include your personal picture. You can just use a picture that is related to your niche. The point is that your forum account must look real. This means that when people look at your profile, they would see a picture and a short biography. Make it look real. Do whatever you need to do to make it look real. Step number three, post 50 to 100 times to establish a track record. I know this may seem like a lot, but if you are really into communicating with other people, sharing your thoughts, and otherwise engaging with forum members, you will be able to post 50 to 100 times over a number of days fairly easily. During this time, you should not drop any links. 
This is very important because if you drop links from day one, you're going to make people suspicious. People might think you're a spammer. Just interact with people, ask questions, raise issues. If they say something controversial, call them out on it. Always be respectful, but get the conversation going. Step number four. Once you have established some level of credibility by posting 100 times, find high-quality third-party links that people are interested in and share that link and talk about that content. You're sharing this material to get a conversation going. For the next 100 posts, 30 of those posts must involve some third-party link. This must be high-quality content, and it should be obvious that you're doing this to get the conversation going. Do not post the same link over and over again. Also, use many different sites. Don't just use one. You should not create a pattern where it's very easy to see that you are there to promote. Step number five, after 200 posts, drop your own level one link as a response. On forums, you can post in two ways. You can either create a discussion thread or you can reply to one. When you reply, you're just answering an existing conversation. For 100 posts, respond to other people. But once you reach your 200th post, Look for a conversation that is most related to the topics raised by your Level 1 content and discuss these issues. Copy and paste stuff from your content and then link to your page as a source. Step number six, drop your Level 1 link as a discussion thread after 300 or more posts. From post 200 to your 300th post, engage. Do not post your own links. Instead, build more credibility. By the time that you have 300 posts to your name, you should be able to create a discussion about your Layer 1 content. I hope you understand how this works. Follow this sequence. Otherwise, you're going to be dismissed as a spammer. Resist the temptation of just dropping links and leaving. That's not going to help you. People are not going to click your link. Also, many forums enable users to create signatures. These are clickable links of text under their forum account names. Since you're going to be trying to fly under the radar, it's a bad idea to use such a link. Don't do it. The only way you're going to be linking to your website is through the actual discussions and responses to discussions. In addition to message boards and forums, you might also want to consider using Reddit. Take special care when working with Reddit. You'd be better off looking for a subreddit dedicated to your niche or something closely related. Using the same rules I mentioned above to establish credibility before starting your own discussion threads with your link in them. Automated Twitter Marketing Follow the step-by-step -step directions below to set up your own automated Twitter marketing campaign. Step number one, using your keywords, find content using a tool like BuzzSumo. I recommend using BuzzSumo because this online tool intentionally looks for content on social media based on certain keywords and niches. It then ranks this material based on their social engagement levels. When you get access to this type of content using your niche keywords, you can rest assured that the content you see is viral or has enough traction on social media. You don't have to use BuzzSumo. There are other similar tools out there. Regardless, you need to use that kind of tool. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard for you to do this manually. You're going to have to go through a lot of content and manually check the social signals. It's very tedious. It burns a lot of time. In many cases, you are still not sure if you got the right content. Step number two, find your competitors on Twitter and find their keywords. Now that you have a massive list of niche and product-related keywords, use these on Twitter to find all your competitors. Get as many of them as possible. Next, look at the hashtags that they normally use with their posts and copy and paste them into a file. Get as many of them as possible. Step number three, load Hootsuite with BuzzSumo retrieved high engagement content. Now that you have a massive list of highly viral content in your niche, you load them up into Hootsuite or some other auto publication and scheduling tool and auto publish with your target hashtags. Make sure you use one or two hashtags with each tweet. This way, you get a chance at drawing traffic in more ways than one. In addition to the third-party content that you are scheduling for publication using Hootsuite, you should also rotate in your Layer 1, Layer 2, and Layer 3 content. Use a link shortener service like bit.ly. For each of these tweets, rotate among your target hashtags. Step number four, follow your competitor's most active real followers. While Hootsuite and Social Oomph or some other auto-publishing tool you are using runs in the background, you should manually look at your competitors and look at who is following them. Go to those accounts and pay attention to the activities of those followers. If it's obvious to you that these followers are active and truly interested in your niche, follow them. The strategy here is pretty simple. On Twitter, a certain percentage of people will automatically follow you back when you follow them. Not everybody does this, but around 20 to 30% of people will do this. 
The key here is to create a following of not only active real followers, but people who are truly interested in your niche. If you do this right, you build a tremendous amount of credibility with the high quality curated content that you're sharing, and this can draw eyeballs to your layer one, layer two, layer three content, and this can lead to traffic to those pages. Automated Facebook Marketing. Follow the steps below to set up an automated marketing system using the Facebook platform. Step number one, using your keywords, find high engagement content using BuzzSumo or some other tools. Watch video nine again and follow the instructions all the way up to step three. Skip the hashtag part. All steps are exactly the same. Step number two, use your keywords to find Facebook pages and groups in your niche. Once you've loaded your Facebook page with curated content, the next step is for you to find Facebook pages and groups that are interested in your niche. Step number three, engage with other niche-related Facebook pages and groups. Go to those Facebook pages and groups and like stuff, comment, and share your reactions. You're not dropping any links at this point. You just want to be seen as an active member of the community. After about a couple of weeks actively engaging with people and getting them to like your comments, you should then start to drop links to your Facebook page posts. These posts feature third-party content that has been curated. Step number four, drop your site's links from time to time and keep the engagement posts going. It's important to make sure that you do not abandon the Facebook pages and groups that you are tracking. These are all directly related to your niche. You have to keep up your engagement with them and still be an active part of the community. But from time to time, share links from your page. The strategy here is to get people to notice this content. If they like the content, they can click through to your page. If they notice that they like the content on your page, they can then like your page. Your end goal is to grow the amount of likes your page gets. Considering the fact that Facebook is actively reducing the influence of pages, you have your work cut out for you. However, if you do this right, you can build a solid and loyal following of niche fans using this technique.